Thank you, Lisa. Um, thank you everybody for joining this evening. Um, again, the four part series was generated um, based upon other workshops that um, we have given in the past. And we really wanna make this an interactive um, workshop versus me really giving uh, a lecture on the points. I'll do some lead-ins for each one of the basic areas, but we really want your questions because those are the ones that are relevant um, to you now. And again, this is part of a series we put together that um, in, in reaction to the um, COVID-19 um, um, situation where we found a, a lot of our clients needing to shift from a maybe a brick and mortar or a, um, less than a um, face to face type of sales environment into more of an e commerce um, platform. And so with that and everything, um, why don't we go in and get started? Um, the next slide, please. Okay, so what are we going to cover in session two? And, Again, when we talk about e-commerce um, optimization, for those who may have set in other workshops that I've um, given in the past and everything, um, the competitive analysis piece to me is as critical of a um, building block for the, um, your, your e-commerce um, activity than anything that you'll do. Then we'll go into content and optimization and then we'll talk about, you know, what are the key metrics? How do you assess whether or not you are successful at the efforts that are going on? Again, and for just like any other type of um, metric that you use to manage your business, um, these are going to be focused around the e-commerce side of, of your business. So with that, let's go and go into the competitive assessment. Um, you know, to me, it, it's when when somebody comes to me and says that I want to build a or sell um, um, through e-commerce. Okay, I want to be able to build a, a website, or I want to, you know, go on Amazon or go on eBay or something else like that. One of the first things I, I said is that you know you really have to do a competitive assessment. You know. You have to define your product first. You have to make sure you understand your customer, but you really, really need to look at your competition. And again, you know, you have to know who they are and um, why your offering is better than theirs, okay? Um, because you need to stand out, okay? Um, the other one is, is I recommend that you perform a competitive assessment um, it's, it's pretty simple. Get on um, Google, okay, or bring up Bing or whatever, and type in um, search phrases that you believe that your client would type in looking for your service, okay? And y'all, this is um, one of the questions was, were you going to address both, you know, product-based businesses and service-based businesses? And the answer is yes, okay? Um, this part is really critical for either one of them. So whether if you're a, an accountant or you provide um, um, loan services or you have a pencil to sell, you know, you have to know your competition. And the best way to do it and everything is, is go online because, again, that's where your clients are going to be um, um, is online it's typing in search results. And, you know, again, you take a look at it. So, you know, start looking at the first two pages of results, you know, um, how do you measure up? You know, how do they talk about their clients? Um, you know, look at how they, how they name their product. Because remember, when they're doing searches, you know, the search results, you know, the, it's just a one line with a little bit after it. And you just really need to make sure that when they see that, that it's very clear to them that your product it is what it's about, okay? And it's not, you know, you know, you can't be Nike, but you may be the best running shoe, okay? And so maybe that's your name, best running shoe, okay? Um, the other one is the images. You know, what kind of images do they use? 
Um, how do they talk about their products? And also, you know, what are the discounts that they do? So these are all things that when you sit down and you start thinking about your e-commerce business, either building it or improving it, you need to do a competitive assessment and stuff like that because you're competing against these people. And again, you want to make sure that it stands out when people find you. There is a reason for them to click through, and when they get to your site, there's a reason for them to purchase, whether again or or make a uh, make a phone call, or book an appointment, or something else like that. Whatever you're selling, you know, or getting them to call the action you want. Again, you want to make sure that it makes it very easy. So again. Know your competitors first. One of the first things you need to do um, as you start looking at either increasing or starting an e-commerce um, platform. So those are kind of some of the, the, the basic pieces and stuff like that. And so I like to move it to the Q&A piece um, about competitive analysis and stuff like that. And then Lisa, do we have some questions that have come in? We do. We do have a couple questions. So. Um, if somebody's going to do a competitive analysis and sort of use Google, like you suggested, how how do you recommend that they track what they find? Just keep it in a list or an Excel spreadsheet, or, or yeah. what would you recommend? I would do an I would do an Excel spreadsheet. I would divide it up into some things like um, how I do a competitive I do a competitive assessment. I build and manage Amazon stores for small businesses, and what I do is I go out and do a competitive assessment. I take, um, I have some tools that tell me what the top sellers are in the category that the products are in. And I go through and I find them, I copy out the product name, I copy out the features, um, I look to see if they have, you know, how they talk about their product, um, what kind of imagery do they use for it. And, and that's what I do and I, I copy it into a spreadsheet by competitor and I put the link in there and I go back and forth and look at that and you know again again and your top competitors um, a lot of times you'll find that they're they're talking to their clients the same way they're using a lot of the same imagery um, it's just their 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 features are a little different and they're emphasizing those so it, it yeah what I do is a spreadsheet um, and take that that information we talked about, you know, the imagery, you know, um, you know, did you know, did they show, you know, a instead of a, a physical dog harness, did they show the, the, the a harness being used on a large dog being walked, you know, um, so how 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 is that being used because. You know, the people that are winning those search results or selling the most products or, you know, whatever, you want to emulate as closely as you can to them because they've already figured it out, okay? And again, don't try to recreate, you know, try to recreate everything. See what they've done and adapt it to you, okay? Um, and that's really what the competitive assessment is. These are the top people. They've won this contest already, and what I want to do is compete with them, and therefore I need to step up, and I'm going to use as much of the stuff that they've found out that works to my advantage. Thank you. A, a question that's sort of related to that, and also I think it comes a little bit into the marketing, which is our next session, but would you also, um, in a competitive analysis, would you suggest that they check out what social networks and how those people are using social networks as part of that analysis? Very much so. Um, in fact, I just did a, um, um, a, a site assessment for um, a service company in San Ynez Valley. And one of the things we did was, okay, let's go look at your competitor, okay? And let's see how your competitor has things listed or, you know, what kind of, you know, do they have a Facebook group, you know, um, are they active in Instagram, um, do they use local search directories? Um, again, and for those that are in service-based businesses, and we'll talk about this in our marketing session and stuff like that, you know, um, find out where your competitors, the ones that are winning the war, where they're spending their 
marketing um, efforts at? And how do they talk about themselves? And again, you'll see that, okay, they, they, you know, okay, this is the thing they don't do that I do, and therefore that's what I need to emphasize. But I still need to emphasize a lot of the same things that they're doing, okay? Because people are paying attention because they're buying their service or they're, you know, purchasing their product. And Lisa? I'm sorry, I'm talking to myself on mute. My apologies. Um, I do have one more question on this topic. If anyone else has a question, please do submit it now. But the last question is, if, if somebody is a service or, or they're a product with, and they wanna differentiate themselves based on their customer service, how do they figure out what their competitors are doing in that, in that arena? That's the reason, again, you know, go, go through and see how they talk about that. I also see um, the reviews, and we'll, in the marketing thing, we'll talk about the reviews, um, you know, and, and look through those. The testimonials for services, you know, is the same as review, or go to their Yelp, and look to see how they're being talked about, okay? And look to see um, the positive and the negative ones, okay? And emphasize, you know, again, you, you don't, you know, take two hours to respond to a um, request, okay? Um, you know, or say, you know, we, we, we come to you versus, you know, um, we're conveniently located. You know, things like that. So again, pay a lot of attention to the content um, and, and again, social networks that they use, look and see how they talk about themselves and stuff like that. And again, and learn. Now remember that um, they might not be getting all their business through the social networks, but again, if they're out there, um, um, you know, the search, the, the local search directories that they're in, you know, see again where they're spending their efforts. And again, um, my recommendation is to emulate those um, if possible. Great. And with just one final follow-up that we got, um, would you recommend that if they have newsletters or other things to sign up, that you sign up for those to see what they send? Yes, very much so. Okay. <laughs> very much, very much so. Great. You know, because it will, it will be a reminder to you, okay, and what they're talking about, okay? Things shift, and that's one of the things that we, we may not touch on, but um, I'll, I'll make a note to talk about is whatever your customer is interested in now in six months is going to be different, okay? However you talk about it or anything else, you know, it's going to be different because somebody comes out with something a little different, they start talking like that, and you need to think about shifting your message to that, okay? So again, knowing what your clients or you know your competitors are are, are emphasizing is, is is very important. So yes, that's a very good thing is to um, subscribe to their newsletters. You know, um, you know if they if they're doing webinars, get on the webinar, find out how they talk about themselves. Okay. Right. Um, so you'll learn a lot. Yeah, it's that's a really constant helpful. thing. Yes, um, as I was, I used to be a product manager for a large financial institution, and competitive assessments were done once a quarter um, against our top ten um, um, people. We had, you know, again categories of things that we were looking for, and we we did them all the time. And our, our goal was to make sure that what we were delivering was better, continued to be better than the competitors. Okay. We did not want our salespeople being told, well, this people are doing this now, and we weren't even talking about it. You know, it's no, it's no, yeah, e commerce is no different from any other type of thing. Your customer changes, you need to be ready to change with them, and the best way to do that is to stay on top of your competitors. Um, I'm going to move on to the next slide because that takes the questions for, about competitive analysis. Um, okay. Oops, gosh, sorry. There you go. <laughs> okay. Um, 
Yeah, there's a, a lot of discussion about, you know, SEO optimization and things like this. The, 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 the real basic piece of this always is back to is your customer, okay? Um, and for those who, you know, listen to my presentations in the past, the companies that win in this, in this domain of e-commerce Care about the customers first, second, and third, okay? Um, and they understand that they've got to pay attention to them, okay? Um, so one of the things again, and you know, is to make sure that you take and you clearly tell your customer what the product and service is about through the name and stuff like that, you know. Um, cause again, you know, they get the search results and they want, you know, you want them to click through, you want them to give them information, whether it's a size or a price or a, you know, level of service or something else like that, make it really clear to them. Okay. Make it enticing enough for them to click through. Remember, you know, the, the goal when you're doing, you know, you, you come up in searches and stuff like that is not to come up in the searches. Your goal is to have somebody click through to your um, e-commerce site. That's the number one goal when you start on this thing, okay? And you want them in your site, and we'll talk about this when we talk about more about the marketing, but when they get there, you really want them in the site because you can present more information within your site. You have more control over them than you do anytime else. So always remember, first goal is to get them to click and get to your site, okay? Make sure your, your, your content is very, very focused, okay? Don't try to um, boil the ocean on your website. My, you know, for those who've listened to me in the past and everything, pick three things that you're really good at. Three products that, you know, again, you'll find it's an 80-20 rule, okay? 20% of your products are going to generate 80% of your sales. Focus on those. You present the others, yes, but that's not where you start paying attention to. You want that, that one that generates 80% of your sales. That's where you look at. And you want to be very clear about why they need to buy that or this service, very clear about the service. Don't make them think too hard, okay? Because you'll lose them and you won't get them back. So be very, your content needs to be very focused. It doesn't have to be a lot of it. It doesn't have to be long, okay? Now, does it need to be SEO? Yes, but don't worry about that as much as worrying about when you get them there, that you can easily get them to do what you want them to do, whether it is to make an appointment, enroll in your newsletter, or click and give a credit card thing. Make it really easy for them by having really focused content, okay? E-commerce, again, um, is, is, is more and more um, driven by imagery, okay? We first started off with this and stuff like that with the, the the technology and the bandwidth and stuff like that. Imagery just wasn't quite as important. But now with you know the the delivery mechanisms, um, the you know the people the high imagery on phones and stuff like that. Imagery has become much much more important. Okay, do not skimp on imagery. All right. Remember, they can't touch or feel your product or your service or anything else. So imagery is critical, okay? It's best to have fewer images that are good, crisp, and tell the story, all right? Having a portfolio of 100 pictures is not going to sell as good as having three really good ones, all right? And the imagery with it and everything should have context associated with it. Don't make them guess that the person sitting there 
walking the dog and stuff like that isn't um, there. You know, it's, uh, that's a nice picture. But the reason that they should buy it is that it's a no-pull harness, okay, that's, you know, um, dog-friendly. That's what you want to get over with. Don't make them think about why you have that image there. Give them the information there. That's where you can take, again, you take your descriptions, your features, and stuff like that, but you boil it down to the highlights, okay? And that's where you use that on your imagery. And that's what you want. You want them to make a decision to do whatever you want them to do off the imagery without them having to read a page of text. Again, very, very important on that and more, more people buying off imagery than they have in the past. So um, please, whatever you do, really good high quality images are critical. And again, those are the, again, you know, I'm not going to talk about search engine optimization here or anything else like that, but these are the important things to get right. The name of the product, the features of the product, the imageries of the product or service, okay? Get those right. Make it easy for them to understand. Optimize that opportunity to get them to do what you want them to do. So do we have some questions on this one, Elisa? We do, we do. Um, the first question came in, um, and, and I think it kind of points to our previous session, but I just want to highlight it. So someone was asking, kind of the, the where do they create a website? What's the best way to create a website? I would really recommend that um, platform and design webinar from um, May 27th. Um, it will yeah. kind of fold very nicely into this one and have a lot of that information in there. Yeah. Yeah, and the, the goal of the series really was to say, okay, I need to either build me an e-commerce solution, you know, um, get into e-commerce, I need to improve it. And the series is to take you through each one of the major um, pieces of that. So the technology is, 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 is important, but it's not as important as the other pieces that we're talking about on there. Um, we did talk a little bit about the platforms um, in, the, in the previous one. Um, there was one question that was posted that I'm not sure if it fits anywhere, but the, um, it, it had to do with um, Amazon and eBay. Okay, yeah, I look at Amazon and eBay as again marketplaces. All right, um, they're not e-commerce sites; they're marketplaces. Um, that is an e-commerce channel, though. And um, what we'll what I'll try to do in one of the other sessions is to discuss, you know, the the good, the bad, and ugly about either one of those, um, and if you should consider those or not. Um, in fact, there was a I did part of a series, a, a, a larger one on um, April the fifteenth. Um, that's also recorded. That does that that drills down into. The, um, I want to call it the marketplace platforms. Um, you may want to go back and, and watch some of that. Um, I think it was like almost the last slide in that group. But I just wanted to address that, you know, yes, um, but all these things we're talking about still um, apply to these other, these marketplaces. Again, the optimization, you know, you need to know who your competitors are, you know, and things like that. Thank you so much. A um, couple questions in regard to, to what you were talking about with um, descriptions and things like that. Um, somebody mentioned that they have heard about, you know, keywords. If, if you see a competitor using keywords, how do they use those? Do they just build them into the, the text of their website? Okay, there, there are a couple of, you know, um, yeah, yeah. The answer is yes, you build them into your website the, the, the question is, is where do you place them, okay? Um, there's, there's, two, there's two important play, things that you have to have. And one is that it's got to be a visual um, placement so that because 
some of these key words or, or what they are are really key benefits that the that your potential clients are looking for. So they need to be very visual. All right. So maybe it's the name. Okay. Maybe it's in the the top five features. You know, maybe it's in the imagery. Okay. But if you place those there, the other search terms, which again are also keywords, you can, if you you know, if you have them in the context, then Amazon, I mean, Google is able to find those across all, all the major search engines crawl and find those. But you can also put them in, you know, like your imagery with your your meta tags. Um, other places and stuff like that in Amazon, there's a whole area where you can put, you know, search terms, you know, that, you know, that your competitors are being found on, but you can't work into your um, descriptions. So again, remember, it's, it's a bounce bet being found, but the other part is by actually being, you know, um, purchased or, or acted on. So it's, it's a balance on those, okay? But again, if you go, again, you look at the competitors and see what they're doing. If you're worried about keywords and there's ways to find out what keywords that they're, you know, they're being found on and stuff like that. And you simply work that into the website or into your marketplace for it. Um, but again, you have to be a little careful in making sure that, um, that again, the visual piece is something that people can easily read and understand. Okay, it's it continues to evolve. It used to be where your product description didn't have to make much sense. Okay, if it was keywords, you know, stuff, stuff like that. But now it does. People are really looking. They want something that's easy to understand. So it's a balance between those two. At the end of the day, you want to make sure that somewhere within your pages, your platform, that you have all of the keywords that are being searched on the most so you can be found in the search and part of search results. Um, another question came in was, does this have anything to do with Google Analytics or is this separate? Just kind of wondering how the, that ties into to this, this discussion. Yeah, we're going to get into some of the Google Analytics piece and stuff like that. But um, but clearly, um, and again, um, the 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 we'll talk about that. We're going to get into the metrics okay. in a minute and stuff okay, like perfect. that. Okay, we'll perfect. Hold that one then. Okay. Um, and the, the the last one that came in was um, it just if, if somebody wanted to learn more about search engine optimization or how to do this, is there any classes or resources you would recommend to to learn more? Um, the let's see how I can how can I say this. Um, Y'all are in business to sell a service, to sell a product and stuff like that, okay? Um, it's the same as, you know, a lot of things. You, you need to focus on pieces that, that are really, you know, per, pertain to your business. Um, and let other people worry about the technology piece, okay? Now, uh, saying that is that there are clearly going out there, you can go and um, Google it, you know, um, search engine optimization 101, okay? What are the best search terms being used for my domain? You know, things like that. And understand, you know, more about the, the value of search terms and stuff like that. Um, but as far as becoming an expert in that, y'all, the stuff continues to change. It, 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 it is a science um, and um, with some art associated with it. But I don't think that I would say is, is, I don't think I would spend my time trying to become an SEO expert, okay? I think coming up with good context, you know, making sure you understand your competitors, understand your product, your customers, 
and stuff like that. That is where you should spend your time and stuff like that and, and let somebody who does this all day long and loves it and everything worry about the SEO piece. Yes. Good tips, good tips. Okay, that takes us to the end of those questions. And so would you like me to go to the next slide? Yes. Okay, so this is the part that will usually put everybody to sleep. Unfortunately, this is the part that most people don't pay attention to, and this is, to me, um, the key to knowing whether you're successful or not, and that's metrics, okay? It's like the accounting of your business. You know, what's my margin? You know, how many units do I have to sell in order to pay my rent, okay? How many you know, appointments do I have to make in order to make sign one contract, and that contract is gonna return this much money based upon the amount of effort I put into it and stuff like that, you know? These metrics are the same thing. You gotta look at your e-commerce um, platform as a, as a sales channel, and you need to understand, again, how effective it is. Okay, and so there are some very key metrics. Clearly, traffic. How many sessions am I getting? Okay, where's the traffic coming from? You know, again, we talked a little bit about the marketing side. You know, is it organic search where my, um, you know, where my um, sessions are being generated from? Is it from my email campaign? Is it from my Facebook um, group? Things like that. So you need to understand your traffic and where it's coming from. And then, you know, and lay it out month by month, okay? Am I improving? Am I seeing more traffic from organic search? Because you do want your organic search it's sooner or later to be 6% of all your sessions. When you start off, you'll probably, and we'll talk about this in marketing um, um, piece and stuff like that, you know, at the end of the day, you like to have 40% of your um, traffic coming from your ad marketing efforts, okay? You like the other 60% to come from your um, organic search, i.e. people finding you um, in the search engine, they're clicking through for you. And the reason you want this is because you know that if the organic search is working, then your, your opportunity to grow beyond focused advertising becomes greater. And that's what you want, okay? And it also shows how well you're doing in the optimization piece and how Amazon, or let's just say Google, and we'll just say that, you know, um, the, only, the only one you need to worry about is Google, okay? How Google sees you because they generate so much of the, all the traffic is is if you just just worry about them. Make sure you're aligned to them and understand how they um, look at you, and they look at you clearly through the eyes of the customer. And their customers are the ones that are sitting down typing in search phrase. That's their customer. Okay, you're not you're you you as a website are not their customer. Okay. And they want to make sure that that customer has the best experience possible. And they go through a great deal of effort to make sure that the sites that end up on the first, second, third, and all the other pages are exactly what that person was looking for. Okay? And so the first thing to do is to um, is make Google happy. But again, we're, we won't get into that, but again, Know about your sessions. The other key, really, the key to um, e-commerce is conversion rate. Okay, and the conversion rate. Let's say a normal um, e-commerce site that sells products, conversion rate is somewhere between one and a half to two and a half percent. Okay, which means that whether or not it's with a they purchasing something or they're making an appointment or something else like that, you need to understand how well you're converting, okay? So what's conversion rate and stuff like that is how many um, call to action that you have compared to the total number of sessions, okay? So 
So again, you get 100 sessions, you get two and a half sales, you got a two and a half percent conversion rate, you know you're doing okay. You get 100 sessions, you get, you know, um, one conversion, and you know you're not doing well, you know? And what could be causing that? Well, it could be that you're attracting the wrong traffic. Um, worse is that nobody cares. They find you and they say, I don't care, okay? But again, you need to understand what that conversion rate is. This is the most critical metric to me for e-commerce, okay? You may not sell a thousand units, but you know that you're converting at a high percentage, which means what? That the customer likes you, and that's important. Google sees that. If you're on Amazon, Amazon loves that. You know, you don't have to sell a thousand units a month to make Amazon happy. If you're converting at 25 to 35 percent, they love you, okay? because they look at it through their customers' eyes. You know, not a lot of people are finding them, but when they find them, they're buying. So I like them, okay, because my customer likes them. So conversion rate is very, very critical. Um, marketing, again, if you're running ad campaigns, stuff like that, you know, it's critical to understand, you know, Facebook groups, Facebook ads, any of those, is how many impressions are you serving up? Okay, and again, you know, all these ads and stuff like that, we'll get into it um, later in the other one, but, you know, you, you're trying to focus in on what? Your customer. You want to know who your customer is, and that's the reason when we started this series and stuff like that, I think the, the, the most important three things you have to understand and be clear about is what is your product, who is your customer, and who is your competitor, Okay. So you want to make sure you understand who that customer is. You want to be able to look at a group of 10 people and be able to say, those three are my customers, okay? I know them. I know everything about them, okay? Because that's really important, especially in um, advertising. What's the next one? Your click-through rate, okay? Serve up a 1,000. How many people are clicking through? Every one of these metrics has um, industry standards to them. And it's, 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 it's usually by category, okay? The, the click-through rates on ads for, such, for some platforms are different from um, another platform or domain, okay? And you need to understand what those are. What's your conversion rates? Again, you know, how many people that, you know, you serve up a thousand impressions, you got a hundred people who click through, and those hundred, how many of them converted? Okay, we're not, and again, this is important because this is coming through paid ads usually. Okay, and you want to know what that is. And then you want to know how what your ad dollars sales to total sales. Okay, and that way you could properly plan on setting aside a budget by item. It says, okay, um, under Amazon, you know, it, it's you know, your, you, your, your cost of um, an ad sale, it goes 20%, okay? And that's kind of the best practice, okay? So, again, you know, if you spend, um, you know, if the product um, to an ad was, is, a, is a $100 sale, then your ad cost should be, you know, average out to $20. Now, what your total call on sales, ad sales, your total thing should be about 10%, okay? And again, if you put these in place and you monitor those, you can see how well you're performing. And that's on Amazon. There's other um, um, metrics, you know, standards for each, for almost every one of the platforms and domains and stuff like that that you'll be working um, with. So again, understanding what those are and aiming toward those and then adjusting, again, you know, it may be by a product. You may look at it, again, at a product level, okay? Um, the other key metric is knowing your customer, you know, your, your profile, you know. Um, again, Google Analytics, we talked about that. You know, they can tell you pretty much, again, you know, age, um, interest, um, sex, 
They can, you know, they, there's a lot they can tell you. You need to understand that because if you believe your customer is a 25-year-old male that is interested in archery, okay, because you're selling, you know, archery stuff, and you find out all your customers are coming that are 45 years old um, and, you know, just outdoor sports, then you can make adjustments. You know, maybe you're not appealing to the right customer, okay? And your imagery, your context about your site may need to change. That way you know, again, who your customer is and the customer is the one who's buying, not showing up, but buying, okay? If you've got a lot of people showing up and not buying, it's because you may be going after the wrong customer, okay? Okay, also look at reviews and feedback, okay? This is really, really important. Understand how they talk about things. Because, you know, that's who you want to talk to. You want to talk to them how they want it to be talked to. So these are reasons to know this stuff and to measure it and to watch it. And there's, there's another 30 or 40 metrics that I track all the time, but these are really are the key ones that I recommend if you're not doing it, you start doing it, okay? And, and, and by putting those together, and do it month by month, looking for improvements. You know, maybe your goal is two and a half percent conversion rate, you're at 0.5. Okay, well, that's where you are. And so you're going to take effort to change your conversion rate. Okay, and you'll track it. And if you're, if you're improving, good. If you're not improving, then you, did some, you, you need to do something else. Okay. Y'all, metrics, again, is, is just a way to make sure that you're expending your efforts in the most profitable manner, okay? And same as your accounting. To me, these, this, this is as critical as your accounting that you do. So, Elisa, do we have any questions on this? Yes, we do. Um, just a kind of kind of bringing it back to the, the first point you made, can you talk a little bit specifically about what a session is and how you would define that? A session is usually a individual who is visit your site, okay? Um, usually within a certain period of time, usually, you know, if you look at Google Analytics, usually of a 30 day period, okay? Um, and but they may um, look at multiple pages. Okay, so a session is really is is an individual um, um, visiting your site or your your marketplace or something else like that. Great. Thank Clearly, you so if you've got, you know, the and we didn't talk about bounce rates or anything else like that, but pay attention to sessions. That's your first one. Then. It's pages and you know bounce rates and stuff like that, but um, those really get into you know a lot more finite things. But the number of sessions is your starting point. So that's how many people you've attracted to your site or to your marketplace. Okay. And then sort of understanding that this this information might all be coming from Google Analytics, um, and and also understanding that this work should like likely be left to people that specialize in it. How do you how do you suggest to folks to to find people to help them out with these these things? I think again the um, these are these people that do this are online marketing people. Okay, um, Google, the goal again is is, is don't become don't, don't try to become an expert in technology, okay, or online marketing. Understanding it, helping establish, okay, I want to be able to measure this, okay, um, and then taking and setting up what I want to call a very simple um, spreadsheet that just tracks these four or five basic ones and figure out how to pull that information Again, you know, um, Google Analytics, you can go, you can spend all day and, you know, never get half of it done or gone through. But, you know, identifying the key ones and watching those. Um, and again, 
None of those are really hard. Google has made it pretty easy. Almost all the platforms, you know, Shopify, um, Squarespace, and all them, they all have the um, analytics built into them or metrics. And again, the goal is to pull those out into a simple spreadsheet and see how well you're doing. Um, and the, you know, that, that's, that would be my recommendation. I wouldn't try to become an expert at it, but I would, you know, try to tie down five, three to five basic metrics that you want to track and figure out how to pull those. Great, thank you. Um, and then last question I have right now, I'll, I'll ask, but if people do have questions, please do submit those. Um, is, so you talked a lot about sort of um, people kind of measuring how they're doing week over week or month over month. Should people be worried about um, measuring against how industry performance is, or is it really best just to measure against how they themselves are doing? No, that, that is a good point. There are industry standards that you can find. And what, my, what I would recommend is when you set up your spreadsheet is that you find out what that industry average is. Let's say that your industry average conversion rate is 1.75, okay? And so I would make sure that's part of your spreadsheet, okay? And then plug in, you know, what you're, you know, calculate what your conversion rate is, i.e., you know, sales transactions divided, you know, um, in the sessions, um, um, sessions into that. And then compare those two, okay? Am I off 100%, am I off 50% or something else like that? And that's really the, what you wanna do because again, what, you know, hopefully your number of sessions are gonna to continue to grow. And that's one thing you gotta look in. Am I getting, pro, am I getting pro, you know, progressive on that? The other one is, is how am I comparing you know, the next, the next level of numbers, you know, okay, sessions are growing, but am I converting? Okay. And again, set the standard. Um, you may not be able to set a standard for sessions, but you can set a standard for conversions. And that's what you want to see. Okay. And those are the numbers you just put in as part of the spreadsheet. Here's my goal. Here's where I stand. You know, am I improving toward that? Am I you know, 50% of goal. Am I 60% this month? You know, and again, part of that is just, you know, it, it's pretty simple and you'll start seeing, it makes it really easy. Again, you set a small set of, of, of metrics, you know, you set the standards, you see how well you're doing against it, and then you can focus on things. It really, these, these metrics help you focus in what needs to be done. Okay, if you're getting more sessions and less conversions, okay, you know, is there something wrong with my product? Or is there something wrong with the traffic I'm um, attracting? Okay, if you're, you know, um, it's also could be an indication of, you know, uh, a holiday period, you know, maybe your product in or service is not something that people actually care about. And so you'll start seeing that, and if you haven't been in business long enough, then you can see, okay, I can expect then that during this period of time next year, wherever I'm at, I'll only see 75% of the business, and I'll plan accordingly. Um, or, you know, my holiday season is my best year. It's my best time of the year, and, you know, and I expect to see, you know, wherever I was selling in October, I'll see a um, a 200% increase in November and a 300% increase in December. Okay, um, but you'll see the you know again those they're they're average. There's industry standards out there. Measure yourself against those, um, and that's really what will kind of drive you know your your focus um, on your on service or your product or you know whatever. Thank you. Um, that does wrap up the questions we had for the evening. Um, I'll move on to the next slide so you can close things out. So again, the marketing, the, the June, June the 24th will be, um, you know, delve down into marketing um, of your e-commerce um, business. And then the, the one on July the 8th, 
really is is key that a lot of people don't understand is the operations part of being e-commerce. Um, and if you don't pay attention to that, all your other efforts are um, are wasted. So again, uh, the marketing I think it will you know, will help people grasp a little more about how to promote themselves. The operations is what do I do to make sure that all the good things I have done continue on and I get what I really want, which is customer loyalty and r referrals and things like that. So I think that again, these that's those are the um, subjects of the of the next two in this series. And again, you know, again, you know, thank y'all very much for, for attending and stuff like that. Um, um, and for those who um, are um, SCORE clients and you have any other questions, please just simply, you know, um, contact your mentor um, and we will we'll get a session set up for deeper dive discussions. For those who aren't SCORE clients who um, want more information, one-on-one -on -one mentoring and stuff like that, Please go to um, santabarbara.score.org um, and request a mentor, and we will get somebody assigned to you, 